Before I begin, I do want to mention that this is going to be kind of a, include a, a gripe of mine, and I'm going to get a little personal. In the last clip, I mentioned uh, Newton and Einstein and Maxwell, and I want to elaborate on Newton. Newton developed his laws of dynamics, the famous F equals MA, and using physics, which was largely based on Newton, Western Europe conquered the world. They knew how to navigate, they had weapons. They, I'm not saying this was a good thing, but this was the era of colonialism. And oh, around the what, 1900s, it wasn't the Congo, there was the Belgium Congo. It wasn't Indonesia, there was French Indonesia. It was said that the sun never sets on the British Empire, and that was literally true. Because Britain had India and Australia and Canada, and there was no part that the sun was always on one part or another of the British Empire. At least that's what was said. The point is that Newton and other physicists had given the um, Europeans unrivaled power. And if scientists were like religious people, Newton would have been declared a saint and his teachings would have been made sacred. Now, in the early 1900s, Einstein came out with a different view of the world that contradicted Newton's. His, his view was that, well, Newton's laws are a good approximation, but they don't hold in more extreme cases. And there was a famous experiment, I believe done in 1919, something to do with the, uh, the orbit of Mercury. You see, Newton's laws did not predict, if I remember correctly, the orbit of Mercury quite correctly. It was a little bit off, small deviation. And why would any practical person care? After all, everything that Newton had done for the world, why would any practical person care about that? But the people who cared about truth did care. And Einstein's equations correctly predicted what Mercury did. Newton's did not. Einstein's equations were accepted as true. Based on them, E equals MC squared. Tremendous power was discovered. And this gets into epistemological methods. Had scientists been using the religious epistemological method, Newton would have been considered an incarnation or a saint, or at least an authority not to be contradicted. But that's not the way science works. Science plays, places truth above everything. Well, not always. Scientists are human, and there's been cases where the truth was resisted for a while. I don't mean to idealize them and make them perfect. But at least that's its ideal. And had they used the religious epistemological method, had they de de decided that Newton's uh, equations were revealed truth, Einstein would have been persecuted, put to death. And what brings this up is there are people, and I, I could name names, but I won't, because I'm not interested in the person, I'm interested in what they do. There was a man who went to Harvard and he studied, I believe, astronomy. And eventually he realized that the scientific worldview contradicted the Bible. So he left his position and now he writes these articles for some Christian uh, group about how astronomy really confirms Genesis or whatnot. And the articles are scientific nonsense. There are other people who've studied geology and with the express purpose of basically trying to subvert science. They wanna get a degree in geology and then they can argue that the earth is really six or 10,000 years old. And I have a tremendous visceral disgust 
for this. Not necessarily for the people because uh, being an engineer and a mathematician, I care more about ideas than people. Maybe that's a failing. So I could probably meet some of these people and just through human beings. But the idea that someone would turn away from genuine knowledge to maintain faith in a book that has not only a talking serpent, but there's another place where there's a talking donkey or something in the Bible, but any revelation, that someone would do that is almost like giving yourself a mental lobotomy. It just, the whole process disgusts me that to me, there's something called truth and that people would subvert that and turn away from that and make an idol. And that's what these scriptures are when used in this way. They're an idol. They're a golden calf. They're a false God. That someone would do that just arouses feelings of disgust and even anger in me. And I guess that's all I want to say for this one. I, I don't want to go on. Um, but that's, that's my point, is that we should be devoted to truth, not to any ancient writing not to any scientific theory. There have been many times when, I've read once that often scientists delight in learning they're wrong. They delight in gaining more knowledge. But in the everyday world, the word disillusioned is a, is a bad word. I've been disillusioned, I'm sad, I'm depressed. But disillusion literally means to you lose your illusions. And anyone who really cared about truth would celebrate every disillusionment because that's one less delusion that they have. And they're one step closer to truth.